The Steam Deck is awesome. It'll let you play PC games in your lap, but more importantly, it turns PC gaming into a console-like experience. But the deck is expensive, so I was thinking, can you get all the benefits of SteamOS on a computer? What about a cheap mini PC? Surely it can't be as simple as installing SteamOS on the PC and then just installing and playing your games. Surely it can't be that simple, right? Hi there, how you doing? I'm TechTweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. So, uh, as you might have guessed, yeah, we're, we're doing the thing. The, the thing from the intro. We're gonna be turning a mini PC into a Steam console using a special version of SteamOS called Chimera OS. It's the same operating system and front end for the Steam Deck, but it's been adapted to work on other hardware. Along with an easy installer that gets it all set up for you, I've seen this sort of thing done on YouTube before, and I've done sort of similar things with like Botocera to turn a PC into a retro console, but I've never done it with Steam OS, which is dumb that it's taken me this long to try it out. And I'm genuinely excited to do this finally because I think it's a really freaking cool thing to do. To get a cheap mini PC and get SteamOS running on it and get the full, easy, convenient, comfortable experience of gaming on a docked Steam Deck. Kind of turning it into a dedicated Steam console, you know? You do? Okay, good. So Chimera OS is a special version of Arch Linux that uses SteamOS as the base. According to the Chimera OS website, instantly turn any PC into a gaming console. They claim it's easy to install. It's minimal, only what you need to play games and nothing more. Zero configuration needed, automatic updates, works with any controller. As for what kind of PC you'll need, the main concern is the GPU. The Chimera website says that you need an AMD GPU. Now, I've heard of others using NVIDIA GPUs, but maybe you'll be missing features like the performance overlay. I don't know. I'm not testing other PCs today. The good news is that most of the gaming-focused mini PCs use AMD GPUs. So if you get a mini PC with a Ryzen processor, like the many that I've shown on my channel, you should be fine. The PC that I'm going to be showing you today is this, the GMK Tech Nookbox M5. We'll talk about the specs in a minute, but first let's do a quick unboxing, why not? In here you get some word papers, obviously, and the PC itself. Also you get a mounting bracket, oh heck yeah, an HDMI cord. Uh, now I'm one HDMI cord closer to meeting the girl of my dreams. And a power cable, and in here is the power adapter, 65 watt adapter. And here's the mini PC. R really nice little unit. I like how small and kind of minimalist it is. No flashy RGB or dumb gamer stuff or anything. On the front, we have a power button, a headphone hole, one USB-C hole, and two USB-A holes. Plenty of ventilation. And on the back, we have two more USB-A holes, and one display port hole, and one HDMI hole, and two Ethernet holes, and a power plug hole. Going over the specs, like I said, this is powered by a Ryzen 7 5700 APU with included Radeon Vega 8 graphics. We also get 32 gigabytes of dual channel DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 mega things per second and a one terabyte internal NVMe SSD. And of course, we get the connectivity we need, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, support for triple displays, everything you could want, really. As for the price, you can grab this for $339 right now. For context, the lowest end Steam Deck with the 800p LCD panel, that's 400 bucks. This is a flash sale as of the time I'm making this video, so I don't know if it's going to stay like this, but man, 340 bucks for a 5700U gaming computer with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD, that's actually an awesome price for a setup like this. It comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, however, we're not going to be using Windows. We're installing Chimera OS. OS. So you can either install Chimera OS on the internal drive, which will overwrite Windows, but I figured I'd install Chimera on its own drive and keep the Windows drive in case I want to go back or move Chimera to a different computer or something. So that's why I got this, an additional 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. 
This is a Samsung 970 Evo Plus. Great drive. I've used this exact drive in many builds. And if you're following along at home, you'll also need a USB flash drive of at least 32 gigabytes. I'm using this low profile SanDisk drive. And you're going to want to have your controller handy. The controller I'm using is my favorite controller, the 8-BitDo Ultimate controller. And that's it. That's all you need. The PC, maybe an extra drive, USB key, maybe a controller if you don't have one. I'll have links to all this stuff uh, in the description below if you want to pick any of it up. The first thing we need to do is download the Chimera OS installer. So I'll get this plugged in and boot into Windows. There we go. It got the mini PC all set up. It's a snappy little machine in Windows here. A nice clean install of the OS, no bloatware. So we'll just head over to the Chimera OS website and download the image. You can read through the info on the site. There's lots of good info on there. But we're going to download the image with this big button here. And then the instructions say we're also going to need Etcher to make our bootable USB installer. So let's grab that at the same time. We'll get the Windows installer version. Once that's done, we can install Etcher and then we're ready to flash our image. I'm gonna shove my dongle in the USB-A hole on the PC and then we're ready to party. Aw yeah. In Etcher, uh, click Flash from File and then select the Chimera OS image that we downloaded. Under Target, we're going to choose our USB drive and then click Flash. It should only take a few minutes to flash the image and then that's it. We have our bootable USB installer. And now I'm going to swap my SSD. The top of the PC pops right off and then there's a protective cover that you can unscrew. Easy stuff. There's our upgradable internal components. 32 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM and dual channel configuration. And there's the SSD. It looks like they have a little heatsink on that. <laughs> Cute. So our SSD is going to go in there and then we'll screw it in, close it up. And just like that, we've prepared our mini PC to become a steam machine. Let's start up the PC with that USB stick inserted. Yeah. I'm going to select Install Chimera OS from this menu, and then it'll do some fancy looking hacker stuff, and then we'll be taken to a very old looking setup screen. You'll need to connect to your Wi-Fi network here to continue. Once you're connected, you can back out to the main menu, and then it'll ask you which drive you want to install it on. Make sure that you select your internal drive. It'll say, are you sure you want to proceed? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. And then it'll do some stuff and some more stuff. It'll download the image, install. <laughs> I just left it going while I went to have a snack and a bath and to argue with my cat. And it was done when I came back. It took about an hour, I think. When you're done, it'll ask you if you want to restart. Uh, before you say yes, I recommend you unplug your USB boot drive because you don't want it booting to the installer again. And while I'm at it, I'm going to plug in the dongle for my controller. Booting up the computer again, you'll be greeted by the Chimera OS logo, and then you're into the setup. My controller works just fine, uh, so I'll go through here, select my language, connect to Wi-Fi, enter my Steam login information, and then after a minute of setup, boom! Yeah, we're, we're good to go now. We got Steam up and running. It's working just like a docked Steam Deck. You can see your games, install your games, and it all seems to work fine. I wanted to get a game going, so I downloaded Botvice, which is a small game that I love, one of my favorite games. And it started right up and it worked right away. It pulled my save game off the cloud with no issue. <laughs> Freaking awesome, man. So uh, here I'm downloading and installing a bunch of stuff to try out, but we're going to switch over to my display display capture now so that I can show you everything properly. And then, yeah, here we are. So I, I downloaded a ton of games. I left it downloading overnight, so I had lots of stuff to try out and test and show you. Uh, let me give you a quick tour here. Uh, if you've used a Steam Deck or even Steam Big Picture mode, this will feel very familiar to you. You have a home screen with your recent games. You can press the guide button on your controller to bring up the side menu. And in here, you can go to your library to see your games. I think this should have about the same compatibility as the Steam Deck. Every game I tried worked fine. And you get the same quality of life features as the Steam Deck. So you can press the guide button to bring up the in-game Steam menu and it looks exactly 
exactly like it does on the Steam Deck. You can also hold the guide button and press A and look at this. You get the quick access menu, just like on the deck. And in here you can do stuff like change the FPS limiter, change the scaling mode. You'll see access to the TDP and GPU clock speed in here, but those don't work. The system will run at max TDP regardless of what you choose here. It, that's not a big deal though, since we're not on a handheld. Also, you can go over to the Steam settings and you get the same bunch of settings that you get on the Steam Deck. Uh, you can manage your storage, connect up Bluetooth controllers, adjust all sorts of controller settings. And of course, you can bring up the Steam Store where you can browse through the games, find the free games, buy games, take advantage of them Steam sales. Oh, and uh, for the games themselves, you get the same options that you do on the deck. So you can adjust the controller settings on a per game basis and try different Proton versions for compatibility, choose the resolution that the game launches at, and you can do everything with a controller. They weren't kidding when they said this was a controller first experience. If you've been wary about getting into PC gaming because it seemed difficult or confusing, this sort of setup is the perfect way to game on PC for you because it's made to feel more like a game console. And it all works very well, and it's easy, and it's fun. This video has gone on for a while, so I'm not going to go super in-depth into the performance, but I do want to show you enough stuff to give you an idea of how the GMK Tech Nookbox M5 can handle stuff. The 5700U processor isn't a beast, but it's a very competent, budget-friendly APU. And I personally really enjoy seeing how far we can push a mini PC to get the best performance. So first, I gotta mention that the vast majority of games on Steam will play totally fine on here. I'm talking about the scads and scads of lower spec games, indie games, and older games available to you on Steam. You could have a lifetime of gaming playing games like this, and honestly, there are probably three times as many amazing indie games as there are AAA games that come out each year. But the 5700U is powerful enough to handle even the higher end indie games and definitely all the older games. Games from like the Xbox 360 era or lots of the games from even the Xbox One era are gonna be absolutely no problem on a machine like this. You're gonna be able to run them probably at high settings and they'll be perfectly playable and enjoyable. And uh, I wanted to show you this. Some games will start right up, but some games will need to do shader caching. It only takes a minute or two and it only needs to be done once, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, for the most part, all the older games I tried played awesome. If you have a backlog full of older games, then this is a perfect machine to work your way through the backlog. As for modern games, there will be lots of games that'll be hit or miss. But as usual, if you tweak the settings, choose a lower preset, lower the resolution, you can usually get most stuff playable. And I'd be a bad tech weeb if I didn't mention that we are on Linux here, so there will be some games that straight up don't work. Just like on the Steam Deck, not every game will work. It's pretty rare to find a game that doesn't launch, but they're out there. However, keeping in mind that this isn't a beast of a gaming PC, I was really impressed with the performance. I didn't try to run like the hardest to run AAA games, but I tried some stuff. Monster Hunter Rise is the big game that I bought in the recent Steam sale. That's the main game that I'm planning on playing in the next little bit, and I was happy to see that it's perfectly playable at medium settings. It plays smooth, it feels great on the controller, and immediately when I started this game up, I was like, okay, yeah, this feels like a console. Doom Eternal was great. I was at the low settings with dynamic resolution scale set with a 60 FPS target, so it wasn't running at the full 1080p, but honestly, I didn't mind at all. It looked great, it played great. I played for a few minutes and I had no doubt that I'd be just fine to play through the game on this machine. And I tested some other stuff. I won't go over each game. These are just a few examples. I plan on testing a bunch more. I'm gonna play around with Chimera OS some more and see if I can figure out all the tricks and stuff. You'll definitely see me showing you this again sometime soon because it's a really neat thing to do. I definitely recommend giving it a go. And what do I think about the GMK Nookbox M5, you ask? I think it's really good. The way I see it, there are three main factors that set mini PCs apart. The first is the way it looks, you know, whether it's big or small or simple or flashy. The second is the specs. What kind of guts does it have? How fast is the processor? How much RAM? How much storage? And the third is the price. How much bang for the buck do you get? And I think that this PC nails all three. It's got that great, simple, minimalist look to it that I like. 
It's got a decent APU that can handle lots of games and tons of RAM and storage compared to other mini PCs at this price. It's 339 bucks, at least at the time of filming. The prices of these things go up and down all the time, so I don't know if this is still an amazing deal compared to what else is out there when you're watching this video, but as of the time of making the video, I can say I have no problems recommending this system, especially if you want to turn it into a Steam Home console with Chimera OS. If you'd like to pick one up and do this, there's a link to this and everything else that you need in the description below. And that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching and stuff. If you like this video, then check out this video, my review of the Ioneo AM01, a very unique retro looking mini PC. And it has the same processor as this one. Pretty cool product. There's a link on the screen right now and down in the description below. And you can go watch it now because we're done. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.